Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I'm Father Steve Sellers, and this is just a brief daily message of hope for today. And uh, I'm preparing for the vigil mass for this uh, weekend and in about an hour or so and uh, getting ready for a busy weekend. And uh, we have a wonderful, powerful message in the gospel today from Mark chapter 8. Uh, where Jesus takes his apostles up to the, the farthest northernmost point um, in uh, Israel, the farthest north that uh, uh, we have on record that Jesus traveled. Uh, and he took them up to the, uh, the outskirts of Mount Hermon, uh, up in the vicinity of Caesarea Philippi. Uh, and he takes them there, I believe, for an incredibly important uh, reason, First of all, he was preparing them uh, for his journey down to Jerusalem uh, uh, and the, what awaited him there, his uh, arrest and his mistreatment and his uh, crucifixion, death, burial, and also his resurrection. He was preparing them for that, but he was doing it in a, a dramatic way. Uh, Mount Hermon is a center of demonic activity uh, going back to the time of even before Noah and the flood, uh, the, the, the Jewish people believed that when uh, Satan and his uh, uh, cohorts in heaven were cast down to earth, they landed at a specific place. They landed on Mount Hermon, according to the ancient book of Enoch. Uh, and it is there at Mount Hermon where there is a cave uh, it is the source of uh, water for the Jordan River. Mount Hermon is the, uh, the tallest peak in that vicinity at a little over 9,000 feet. Uh, it's the primary source of uh, fresh drinking water for the Jordan River and the Sea of Galilee. It's about 25 miles north of the Sea of Galilee. And uh, it's believed and has been since antiquity uh, that that's where the demons resided. There was a large cave that was believed to be the entrance into the, the underworld, into the afterlife, where people would throw their sacrificial offerings into the cave, including their children, uh, to try to awaken and to summon forth the fertility gods and goddesses, uh, especially one in particular, the god Pan, uh, the one who was in charge of fertility and was appeased and uh, amused by uh, various sexual activity uh, in a perverse way. And so this would, would have been a source of uh, earthly hedonism. It's been a source of uh, paganism. Uh, the Greeks, the Romans all had temples uh, all around Caesarea Philippi and up uh, in, into the area around Mount Hermon. And indeed, on top of Mount Hermon, there is the ruins of uh, a Roman temple. And so Jesus took his apostles there and asked them, who do people say that I am? And of course, they responded. People say one thing, people say another thing. And Jesus says, but who do you say that I am? And Peter responded, you are the Christ. And it's there that Jesus reveals his identity to them. By tradition, that's also where Jesus was transfigured before them, showing them his glory and his honor. And then he tells them the key point in, in this very powerful lesson from Mark chapter 8. He said, if you really want to be my disciple, you must, rena you must renounce yourself, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. He was reminding them that you can either choose this way of demonic paganism or this way and follow me into eternity, graphically showing them their choice and what it meant to deny yourself, the demonic pagan activities, and choose holiness and righteousness, which is the same choice he gives us today. Uh, renounce yourself, deny yourself, and take up your cross and follow him in the way of holiness and righteousness. I hope you have a blessed weekend, and God willing, Dodd and I will see you on Monday.